Hi, this is Titus Welliver. You're listening to TV Confidential. Ed Robertson welcoming you to TV Confidential, radio talk show about television that will play part two of our conversation with Emmy Award winning actress Donna Mills in our second hour. Donna Mills, the actress known around the world as Abby Cunningham Ewing on Knott's Landing. We hope you stay tuned for that. Also coming up later on this hour, we will play part two of a conversation we began a few weeks ago with James Dumont. James Dumont, the actor currently seen on HBO's The Righteous Gemstones. James recently completed a production on an upcoming adaptation of Robert B. Parker's Spencer novel, Wonderland, that was filmed on location in Boston for Netflix. We'll talk about that. Plus, we'll tell us a few other things that are on the horizon when James Dumont joins us for part two of our conversation later on in this hour. In the meantime, Tony Figueroa and Donna Allen are with us as they bring us this week in TV history. Tony's segment, as always, brought to us by our friends at Stories Salon, Southern California's longest running, regularly performing live storytelling ensemble. StorySalon.com, Facebook.com forward slash Story Salon. What do you have for us tonight? Okay, October 21st, 1962. Chubby Checker sings his 1960 number one hit, The Twist, on Ed Sullivan's Variety Show. Ooh, come on, baby. Yes. Of course, that was back in the day where, you know, for a performer to get on The Sullivan Show, that was... A big deal. That was a uh-huh. big deal. That was a, that was a career-making deal. And Ed Sullivan didn't just let anybody on the show. And Ed Ed was shrewd in certain senses. Shrewd. Shrewd, yeah. Well, remember when we had uh, Hank Garrett on? Yes. uh, Because Car 54 was opposite the Sullivan show. Ed uh, did not uh, want him on, and he got bumped. And then uh, he was told, he'll forget next week. So, you know, he was shrewd, but apparently no long-term memory. (laughs) Now, did they shoot Chevy from the waist up? Or I think we would have known that. I think we would. Have, I was looking for YouTube I was thinking stuff. About that. I, I'm thinking the same thing, and I don't have any specifics on that. And I've been trying to find on you know all the different websites, YouTube and others. There's lots of footage of the twist, but the thing is, the twist is also a dance, and you right. have to show that dance. Yes. But there wasn't. You know, I'm remembering all the footage I've seen of Chevy Checker doing the twist. It wasn't the wild sexual gyrations no, that it's, are attributed to Elvis Presley. Right. It's the uh, you know. Oh, okay. So folks, now Ed is trying to mimic <laughs> the twist. <laughs> Glad this is radio. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to kind of describe <laughs> the twist, which uh, does involve uh, feet and arm moving. Well, this is and it was yeah. something that parents, even conservative parents at the time, would let their kids do. Yeah. It seemed very much a slice of America. Yeah. Yes. I remember there was uh, the Flintstones with their limited animation. Most of their modern dancing was a variation of the twist mm-hmm. because you could move you know, the bodies the way that they were structured. That's basically the, the, you know, the feet would move and the arms would move mm-hmm. and that was it. Of course, they didn't have any sound that sounded right. remotely like that. It was their generic, dun, 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 but they were doing the twist, mm-hmm. just slower. Uh, <laughs> but you, yeah, you have, you know, this is, he's also introducing a dance. It's mm-hmm. not just the song. It is a right. dance. And, uh, you know, so you would see the twist being done, you know, back then uh, Bandstand was new, right? Philadelphia uh, was uh, when they were doing Bandstand. So right. Bandstand was already on. But, you know, you had, you know, this would be very popular. I mean, the song was already on the radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, he probably had done a dozen other shows, but Sullivan was the big deal. Yeah. When uh, there's two things that come to mind, and, and this is not a huge digression, but uh, I remember hearing in the '80s, you know, the, the twist became popular again because Chubby Checker had done a rap version with the Fat Boys. Right. <laughs> I remember that. And it, it, I enjoyed hearing it on the radio driving around. I mean, it was kind of cool. It was full circle. You know, basically uh, the next generation of morbidly obese musical artists uh, taking over uh, you know, a song like that. A lot of fun. But I also was a big fan of the show Quantum Leap. And there was an episode called Good Morning uh, Peoria, which took place ar- around this time period. And uh, Sam Beckett, Dr. Sam Beckett, Scott Bakula's character, was a DJ in Peoria, Illinois, and somebody is delivering a record. A musical artist is delivering his own record to see if it could be played on the radio, and it was Chubby Checker 
playing himself and he's playing the twist and Sam starts dancing to the twist, doing the twist, and Chevy's Checker's going, I like what you're doing. Let me see if I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you had one of those little you know, inside jokes that Quantum Leap was famous for, mm-hmm. and it's basically Sam Beckett teaching Chubby Checker how to do the twist, and then the rest would be history. Of course, in an earlier episode, he taught Michael Jackson how to moonwalk <laughs> and gave Buddy Holly the lyrics for Peggy Sue. And, uh, but, yeah, I, I always have to think of that. You, just, you have that wonderful, what they used to call the, uh, the kisses with history. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, this is an icon, and Chevy Checker is, is somebody. I mean, that song never went out of style. It would be either you would... People would do it. I mean, people still do it at parties. Oh, and yeah. Whether it's yeah. nostalgic or something. It's just, it was fun. And the thing is, he was called Chubby Checker, but whenever I've seen footage of him, he, he wasn't that obese. No. no. He was more like Husky. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but that does, a, and that, then when that you, does a roll when, off the when you're, when you're Husky and you wear the, the suit. Right. Yeah, there, yeah, it doesn't really show off. Yeah. Of course, yeah, it, he was probably burning it off because he did the burning twist it off, and also you know years. a lot of times he wore tuxedos, yeah. and you anybody looks stout in a tuxedo. Yeah, you put the cummerbund on, the bow tie, the the ruffles, and all that. Everybody looks stout in a tuxedo. If you've ever been an usher at a wedding, you're going to get at least ten, fifteen pounds at it. Chebby uh, Checker was on a show, the quintessential variety show of its time, which was the Ed Sullivan Show, which would make or break so many different yeah. careers. And also, you have this song that became this dance craze. So there were times when Ed Sullivan would have to go, I need to get that guy on my yeah. show. And that's, that, that's what really happened with Elvis, because other people were playing him. And even though and other, he had and other shows, Other shows had him on. Other shows had him on. And there were times there, and I'm sure Chubby was part of this, uh, this scenario. It's uh, other people having him on. This guy is too big not to be right. on my show regardless of anybody who could potentially have problems with having Chubby Checker on TV. And I'm sure at that time there were people that had issues yeah. for whatever reasons that well, they would have. He wasn't exactly Little Richard no. or James Brown. No. No. He was quite he was subdued. Mainstream. Yeah. He was mainstream. Right. Mainstream by comparison. But, you know, at that time there were probably places in the South that didn't want to see him oh, on. True. Right. But it was like... Chubby was too big for any of that consideration. He had to have this guy on. And like I said, we're still talking about him now. That's Everybody right. knows the song. And uh, you go to a party on a Saturday night at somebody's house, uh, that might be in the music collection. Yeah, or, you know. It's certainly one of those songs that kind of brings the party back up if there's a lull. It is cer- and it's become a fixture at uh, sporting events. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, in between innings. It's or- been a, a jingle. Yeah. Uh, I think Brim Coffee. Uh, had that uh, for a while. They co-opted that, probably with Chubby singing it. Probably, yeah, yeah. Do the brim twist, and ah. you would see uh, somebody would animate the uh, jars of coffee to actually do the twist, which was you know stop motion. But that was that was the cute thing about the song. So it's something that uh, would carry on forever and ever and ever. And, and fifty years from now, people will still be dancing the twist. Become an advertiser or underwriter of TV Confidential, and let our brand help promote your brand. To find out more. Go to televisionconfidential.com slash advertise. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All-American Dish, your Dish authorized retailer now. 800-296-1251. 800-296-1251. That's 800-296-1251. Offers require credit qualification, 24-month commitment, early termination fee, and e-auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. At Roberts, with a few minutes, enough time to tell you that our friends at Shout Factory are paying homage to rock and roll legend Chuck Berry with a collector's edition DVD and Blu-ray release of Chuck Berry, Hell, Hell, Rock and Roll. Chuck Berry, Hell, Hell, Rock and Roll, the 1987 film directed by Taylor Hackford that is also the latest release from Shout Select. One night in 1986, Keith Richards invited Eric Clapton, Robert Cray, Linda Ronstadt, Etta James, and a host of other music legends for a special evening of music to commemorate Chuck Berry's 60th birthday. Taylor Hackford captured that evening on film and released it in 1987 as Chuck Berry, Hell, Hell, Rock and Roll. In addition to the film itself, the collector's edition release of Chuck Berry, Hell, Hell, Rock and Roll, 
includes 54 minutes of rehearsal footage, the reluctant movie star, a behind-the-scenes making-of documentary, Chuckisms, a collection of classic Chuck Berry remarks, the burnt scrapbook, Chuck Berry reminiscing over his musical memories with the band's Robbie Robertson, an introduction by director Taylor Hackford, and a whole lot more. The Shout Select series from Shout Factory shines a light on films that definitely deserve a spot in your personal collection. Chuck Berry, Hail Hail Rock and Roll, Collector's Edition, now available on Blu-ray and on DVD through our friends at Shout Factory.